As soon as Nick saw a faint glimmer of light, he threw his entire body against it. He ran at such a speed that the door fell right open and he crashed down onto his face. Erin helped him up and dragged him across the concrete outside the abandoned complex, suddenly urgent after hearing vague scraping sounds from the building. The dead spires of the ruined Subido city jutted up outside the chain link. Are you out yet? Oh, shit! I knew I forgot something! Erin mumbled, still hauling Nick along to the east side of the collection of buildings within the perimeter wall. Yeah, yeah, we're fine. Would it have killed you to keep me informed? Haynes is throwing a fit over here. The two skidded around the corner of the last building to see Ryan's cruiser hovering just above the ground, waiting for them with the cargo door open wide. Ryan is going to kill those engines mashing the gears like that. Does he have to fly so low? He knows how to do his job. Will you be all right? She pushed him to make him run to the ship, but stayed where she was. Uh, piece of cake, kiddo. I'm a professional, you know. Nick ignored that last comment and sprinted as fast as he could towards the ship and away from his first mission, with a sneaking suspicion that this job was never going to get easier. He jumped easily to the cargo bay and the doors slammed shut behind him, loudly and ominously. The rest of the team were gathered above Nick, standing on the chain-link floor. Ryan sat at the pilot's controls, glanced down through the holes to Nick. I really hope it is. And now Erin was truly alone. And, if she was totally honest, that was just how she liked it. Her against the alien, the way it was meant to be. Although, maybe knowing that Ryan was flying right behind her and ready to shoot the place up if all went to hell was a little comforting. Maybe. She clicked the gun properly into place so that it sat perfectly snugly into her whole arm, shoulder to wrist, with her palm resting ever so lightly on the trigger. This was why the Mr. Cannon was her baby. No one else could operate the damn thing. All flicks and switches, having to be done in the right order with the right timing, and only certain ones for certain actions, and some never unless you had nothing to lose, and some that would even blow up in your face if you got it even a fraction wrong. The most complicated trigger sequence ever. So many soldiers and civilians had been killed in simple accidents with it that they'd all been banned and decommissioned years ago. Some had still been in production and trade over the black market, of course, and it was on these that Erin now relied upon to have enough firepower to keep the aliens back. Nidrax were no problem, not really. Even a regular gun would work, it just took longer. But some things, like what she was about to face, just couldn't be beaten. And so, they had to get the one person who could operate the gun. The girl who knew without ever learning. Erin had always been sure that she had been designed to use the Thermistic Cannon. It explained the bolts that had been put into her flesh as a child. Deep down she'd always known that, from the moment she picked the first one up whilst preparing for the third breach back in Sabido's glory days. But sometimes, just sometimes, she felt the Mr. Cannons had been built just for her, and she was built for them. But maybe she was just crazy. Okay now, Castoria. Ada Luther said quietly and calmly into the receiver. Druid phenomenon manifesting in five, four. Erin felt the deadly smile spread over her face again, and she held onto the trigger. Back up on the cruiser, Nick watched the screen onto which Mai was transmitting data from her base at the station. The echo waves, radiation caused by increased alien activity, spanned a complex-looking graph. Although Nick had never been much good at reading echo waves, the huge spikes that were jittering across the screen seemed pretty obvious now. Three, two, one. Ada Luther, with dark hair tied back into a stern bun, leant over the transceiver. They all looked expectantly down through the window to Erin, waiting below. Nick noticed Ryan cross his fingers before realising that he himself was holding his breath. On the screen, the word manifest flashed up in red. Down on the ground, mayhem well and truly broke out. The entire of the main building crumbled to the ground as though it were made of water, and the druid, caused by a build-up of alien matter and echo waves, broke through. The walls fell away in clouds of dust and rubble. 
from the wreckage, black tentacles reached and stretched into the sky, the main body hidden in the dark depths of the abandoned building. Spirits and sun. It's huge. Eren fired a huge pulse shot into the belly of the beast, or rather, as close to the belly as she could get. The tentacles stemmed from the ground, attached to the main body which was under the ground in one of the basement levels. Nothing she can't handle. Christy and Sempt, their blonde spooker from Earth, was stood slightly away from them, and nodded as he looked down through the glass. She's a tough one, he said, making them all jump. Erin sent two more pulse blasts, and the black creature reacted by letting out a dreadful screech, and standing all its tentacles on end. One tentacle straightened like a pole and lashed out directly at her, but she jumped away and it slammed into the ground instead. Wire on the nearby perimeter wall rattled ominously. What's going on? What's going on? A new voice cried down the radio link. As one, the team looked to the speaker on the ship's control panel. Is Erin chicken butt? I can't see, I can't see. Ada sighed, and Ryan flicked the switch to send video streaming direct to Mai's computer on Helios Station. Oh, wow. The girl's voice continued from the speaker. It really is big. Ada's eyes never left the young lieutenant leaping out of the way of the dark beast before them, but she bent her back slowly to push the button below the radio. Kinase, this channel is for emergency mission use only. It was an emergency. I couldn't see my favorite superstar blasting ghouly behinds. The druid was finally recovering from being woken up, and all twelve giant tentacles, each thicker than a Nedrak's body, came flying at Eren. The creature had pinpointed her location and wouldn't let her go. The woman jumped out of their path and landed gracefully feet away, as though the 80 kilo gun on her arm weighed nothing at all. She fired another giant pulse into the ruined building's foundations, trying to get to the vulnerable body that was still hidden from view. Aaron! Ryan slammed the radio button so hard that Nick half expected it to shatter under the pressure. Quit the pulse shot, would you? There's not enough juice in that gun for you to keep on guessing. You aren't going to reach the body like that. She landed with a roll that should have been made impossible by the bulky machinery and stood in a stance, ready to leap again. Oh, do you want to do this or shall I? All the same, she took his advice and switched to standard shells, aiming at the flying tentacles instead. Erin managed to explode the tip of one into a gooey black mess that dripped and bled like ink. She skipped out of the way of the acrid substance, shooting more as she went, but only two appendages later, she clicked the trigger and nothing happened. What's that? Ryan called over the channel. No power left. Oh, if only someone had warned you before. I get it, Ryan! Shut up! Yeah, Ryan, shut up! Mai joined in. Erin knows what she's doing! Ada lent over Ryan and opened up the control panel beside the speaker switching the reception from Mai's microphone on to mute. Ryan's expression changed from smugness to mild panic. Now reload the damn gun! Erin slammed a new canister into the gun and threw the empty one at a nearby tentacle. It shattered and left a gaping hole in the dark, scaly surface. She shot into the bleeding wound and the entire tip blasted off and fell twitching to the ground. Thick, inky liquid spurted out. She grinned nastily at her handiwork as the mutilated creature screeched again, several tentacles now a lot shorter than they were and all shedding a dark fluid that made up the phenomenon. Then a horrid thought occurred to her. Hey! She whispered softly, almost to herself, but with the radio microphone still switched on. This isn't one of those things that can regenerate its limbs or anything, right? It was as though she had set off a magic spell. Straight away, the tentacles started lengthening again, and the blood stopped dripping down. Ugh, sore shit! They can grow back. Mai's informative voice broke in, too late. As you would have known if you hadn't switched me off. Her microphone was still set to mute on the control panel, but beside it, the readout display bore the word override, flashing in cheery colors. How did you- Hello! I'm the communications officer! Erin seriously considered taking her earpiece out and handling this herself. Okay, any bright ideas? Oh, wait, I know! How about a pulse shot? Spirits protect us. 
When that girl gets out of this, I am going to shoot her. <laughs>